This is breaking news. The word you're going to hear from me the most in 2021 is the word recovery. Recovery, because New York City is coming back, and we're coming back strong. But it has to be a recovery for all of us. It has to be a recovery that reaches every neighborhood, everyone, regardless of income, regardless of background. Everyone has to be a part of this, and this is what we need to build now. We need to build aggressively. I talked at the beginning of the week about the new efforts we're going to make focused on recovery, working with all elements of the New York City community. And at the beginning of the week, we started this week naming our new recovery czar, Lorraine Grillo. We are going to deepen our efforts and keep adding to a team that's going to lead the way in bringing New York City back. And I need the very best, most talented, most experienced people to do this. So today, adding to our recovery team, adding to the team that will bring New York City back, I name a new senior advisor for recovery safety planning. And Terry Monahan will be taking on this role. And this role is so important because it is about answering one of the central questions that everyone needs answered for us to come back strong, making sure this city is safe, working with all communities, working with city agencies, working with the business community, the nonprofit sector, everyone, determining what concerns need to be addressed, helping us troubleshoot where there are problems, listening to the ideas uh, that we're hearing from all over the city about how we come back and how we come back safer. This is going to be the underpinning of how we do all that we're capable of doing in this city. So I'm 100 percent convinced that this city is coming back strong. But I know it's going to take hard work. And we as New Yorkers are never afraid of hard work. And I choose always people who are known for that incredible energy and work ethic. That's who Terry Monaghan has been for 39 years serving the people of this city at the NYPD, 39 years of protecting us, but also innovating new solutions. Terry is one of the great architects of neighborhood policing, which to me has been a sea change in how we police this city. Now, we really understand that the city is safe when community and police work together, where there's mutual respect, a mutual sense of destiny. That's what neighborhood policing has been creating over years and years now. And Terry has been passionate in that work because he feels it. He loves this city and he loves making sure people are safe. And he knows the NYPD can only achieve its mission with the people, with the people. That's what neighborhood policing has been about. So I turn to him now with appreciation for his great work for the people of this city and with a lot of excitement about the role he will play as my senior advisor, focusing on this recovery and bringing that same urgency, that same can-do spirit to the work of recovery. I pleasure to introduce my new senior advisor, Terry Monahan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First off, I want to thank you for this new opportunity. Uh, and thanks for having faith in me. First as the chief of patrol, and then as the chief of department. And now, I really do look forward to working with you and the city's first ever recovery saw Lorraine uh, Grillo. I really do look forward to it. Listen, I'm a New Yorker through and through. Born and raised in the Bronx. Some people say I may have a little bit of an accent, but I love New York. This is the greatest city. So for me to continue serving the people of this city and help to ensure its recovery, that is a true honor. And the importance of this mission isn't lost on any of us. Listen, there are cities around the world but there is only one New York City, the city that never sleeps. And we all know it's Times Square, filled with crowds, packed restaurants throughout our city, and Broadway shows that have been missing for a while. It's restaurants on Arthur Avenue in the Bronx, it's downtown Brooklyn, Dumbo, and every borough in between. And of course, the millions of people who normally pack our office buildings that bring this city to life. In this new role, I'll have an opportunity to ensure these businesses know 
that they are in a safe city and they can return. And when business is booming, New Yorkers thrive. Listen, there's no doubt that COVID has changed our lives. And although the effects of this pandemic are tragic and unprecedented, New York City has proven its resilience time after time. Whether it was 9-11, Hurricane Sandy, the city always emerges stronger. It's the innovation, the hard work, and that New York attitude that's known around the world. You can't knock us down. But at the core of all of this is public safety. The city is already on its way back to getting on its feet, stronger than ever. Uh, just today, our middle schools welcomed back students. But how are we going to continue this? How are we going to keep moving forward? We're going to do it together. It's going to be that cop standing on the corner or standing on a subway platform. They are absolutely vital, but just as significant is public involvement. And whether it's the coffee cart on the corner that so many people start their day at, or a multi-billion dollar corporations that flock to New York City, each of them want the same thing, an inclusive, safe society that invests in our communities, providing opportunities for everyone. And I tell you, I'm proud to be part of it. And I'm ready to hit the ground running to get this city through recovery. But I tell you, leaving the NYPD is probably one of the toughest decisions I've ever made in my entire life. As a member of the greatest police department in the world for the last 39 years, and the last three as the chief of the department, I've had the opportunity to personally see that when New Yorkers work together, they can accomplish anything. I've also had the privilege of a lifetime to work alongside the best cops in the world. The work of these men and women has made a difference in our amazing city. There are truly no words to describe what it means to me to be a part of the NYPD's storied history. The NYPD will forever remain in my heart, and they will certainly help lead the recovery effort. And I know this. I know this to be a fact because I know the leadership abilities of Chief Rodney Harrison. Rodney is a great friend of mine. We have worked together for many, many years, going back to our time in the Bronx. And I can tell you, without a doubt, he is the right man for the job. Together with all the New York's finest, we've accomplished so much through neighborhood policing. And when we began neighborhood policing back in 2015, Rodney was standing by my side to make this the philosophy under which this agency works through. There is no one in the NYPD that knows neighborhood policing better than Chief Harrison. His dedication to serving every community <coughs> in this city and taking care of our cops is second to none. When I look at Rodney over there wearing that uniform, and I'm quite jealous because now I'm in a suit, <laughs> I miss that uniform, but he makes that uniform proud. He wears it, and he's going to make this city proud. Rodney, you couldn't be a better person for this job. With Rodney taking the helm and Commissioner Shea at the helm, the NYPD couldn't be in any better hands. And I won't be that far away. I'll be working across with all the different agencies, public and private, nonprofits, all with the same goal that the NYPD has, and all New Yorkers. We're going to move this city forward, and we're going to recover. And I'm thrilled to be a part of it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Terry. As always, we can hear your passion, your love for this city, in everything you're saying. And uh, it's a passing the torch moment. And the Bronx is letting go of the torch. And passing over here, I'll just go through Brooklyn. And now Queens is about to have, they already have the commissioner. Now they're doubling up. And uh, commissioner, I know, you know, over these years, you've been a part of great leadership teams. And you have pulled together yourself an extraordinary leadership team over the last two years. I've always admired your ability to see and nurture and support talent within the NYPD, and I know you believe in that team building, so this is a very important day for the NYPD. So I turn to you to announce the new leadership today. Yeah, well, well, just one more moment for that, Mr. Mayor, but before I do, it's, you know, I look to my left, I look to my right. When I look 
to that end of the table there. And it's, it's a bittersweet day in many ways because, you know, Terry and I have been through the, the battles together. Uh, he's a man, 39 years. We've known each other a long time. So much respect and admiration for Terry, and it's tough to see you go, Terry. It is. And I, I can only imagine uh, what's going through your head right now, but on behalf of New York City and, and certainly this department, thank you. And thank you for everything you've done, and you're going to be missed. You are. Not everything, but some things. You're <laughs> Good catch. <laughs> <laughs> and now I look to this side and, and to Rodney. And, uh, you know, this, for me, this was an easy choice. It, it really was. And we have a deep bench. One door closes, another opens. We've said that many times. Um, and we have a lot of great people in this agency. But for me, this was an easy choice. And uh, I had the, the pleasure of sitting down with Rodney and uh, talking to him about this job. And I told him pretty simply, Rodney, it's your time. And, and I believe it. Um, look at Rodney's career. Terry just talked about it. Uh, he's been an undercover. He's been a precinct executive running commands. He's been behind with Terry neighborhood policing from the onset. That's not enough. He's been the chief of detectives. I mean, he is so well-rounded and ready for this job. I think the sky is the limit. Uh, Rodney, you're going to do a phenomenal job. Incredibly proud of you. Um, it's great to see your family here joining uh, and join you with it. But um, congratulations. And I know you're going to do an amazing job for the people of this city and for the people of this department. And last but not least, happy birthday, bro. <laughs> it's your birthday, too? Yeah. Happy birthday, our new chief of department, Rodney Harrison. Thank you. Yeah. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor, uh, for your faith and giving me an opportunity to be, not just be the chief of patrol, chief of detectives, and that'll be the chief of department. Um, you have shown me a lot. Um, your support for this agency uh, doesn't get the recognition it deserves. And uh, I'm going to make you proud, sir. Thank you. I'm going to make you proud. Uh, Commissioner Shea, I've known you for uh, a long time. Mm -hmm. And um, you use the word bittersweet. And um, coming from the chief of detectives now going to the chief of department, it's not going to be easy. Uh, the men and women of the, of the uh, Detective Bureau are absolutely phenomenal, and you know that. Um, I'm going to work hard for you. I'm looking to partner up with you and pick your brain and figure out what can we do to continue to make this a safe city and revive the city once again. Chief Monaghan, I'm sad. Uh, you brought me on board maybe five, six years ago regarding neighborhood policing. That philosophy is absolutely what this city needs. We cannot keep this city safe unless we have that partnership with the people that we're here to serve. And you had the vision, and you put it together, and you made sure that I understood the nuances of it, make sure it's implemented correctly. And um, you mentored me. We spoke every single day on the weekends. I know it might have been a little annoying, but you took every single one of my phone calls. And you guided me through some very difficult times in this department, be the chief of patrol or the chief of detectives. And I will always be grateful to you, sir. And I commend you on your accomplishments within the NYPD. I speak for myself, I speak for Commissioner Shea, I speak for uh, Mr. Mayor, that you're going to be missed. And um, unfortunately, I'm still going to call you. <laughs> I'm still going to ask you uh, about certain things that I may need some, some guidance on. So uh, please keep my, keep my number locked in. Mr. Mayor, if you don't mind. Please. My family's here. Um, I'm not going to get choked up. Too late. But uh, <laughs> you guys have been my uh, my rock. 
Prina, Tyra, Amber, I wish my youngest daughter could be here as well. She actually uh, has a game tonight against the University of Miami, a very big game, which we'll all be watching. Um, but uh, I thank you for your support. There's been many a night that I've had to run out the house 2 o'clock in the morning, 3 o'clock in the morning for a, a major incident. And uh, as much as you said, hey, Daddy, do, do you have to go, you supported me. You made me proud. And uh, I love you all. So thank you. For the men and women of this police department, I want to ensure I make this very clear. I'm going to support you. I'm going to make sure that we get through what was a very difficult time in 2020. But I can reassure everybody here that's listening to my voice that I have your back and we'll get through this together. For the residents of New York City, I'm here to protect you. I'm here to serve you. I'm going to be knocking on your door. I'm going to be coming to your churches. I'm going to be coming to your community meetings. You may get tired of seeing me, but in order for me to be successful, in order to make the city safe, we have to work together. And I'm looking forward to the challenge. Mr. Mayor, thank you very much. Thank you. And I want to just say <clears throat> it's really been a joy over these years getting to know Chief Ronnie Harrison. And you didn't talk about your roots in Southeast Queens. And I know this is something so important to you, uh, Rodney, that you come from a neighborhood you're so proud of and you're so deeply connected to. And that your commitment to this city comes from being a New Yorker through and through. And I've admired your many accomplishments and, and the way you go about addressing even the toughest challenges. But what I've most admired is your heart because you've never forgotten where you came from. And, and before we go to questions from the media, I'd love you just to talk a little bit more about coming up in Southeast Queens and what, what that has given you as a leader and as a public servant. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, thank you. I, uh, I apologize because I really wanted to talk about that, so thank you for giving me that opportunity. So yeah, I grew up in Jamaica, Queens, grew up in a co-op called Rochdale Village. Um, and growing up in that community, we had negative interactions with law enforcement. There were some struggles sometimes, some frustrations. But I also took the, a leap of faith in coming into this organization. Um, there was a time one time, Mr. Mayor, that uh, I was stopped by a, a police officer that was extremely unprofessional. And I said to myself, all cops can't be like this. And how can I make a difference? And how can I make a change? And that's why I took that application and came on this job to make a change. We have to remain professional. We have to serve this city. We can't have incidents like we've had back in the 70s and 80s. All the members of the police department, we have, we're going to go a professional route going to the future. But yet at the same time, we got to get the respect from the communities that we're here to serve as well. And it's very, very important. I grew up in a place where I had some troubled times. I grew up around unfortunate gang violence and, and drugs. And then I came on this job saying, what can I do to save people, to help people? So me getting an opportunity to be the chief of department, I'm looking forward to this challenge. Um, it's not going to be easy. I have great people around me that are going to help me with our philosophies that we have in place. But public safety is very important to me. I'm a victim's advocate. I'm going to work my hardest for everybody to make everybody proud. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate you giving us a little bit of a window on everything that moves you, that has made you the leader you are now. With that, let's turn to our colleagues in the media, and please let me know the name and outlet of each journalist. We'll now begin our Q&A. Uh, first question today goes to Miles Miller from WNBC. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Um, the uh, uh, question is for uh, two questions. One's for uh, Chief Monahan. I mean, you know, you're, you're leaving uh, this job after 39 years. You know, what are you feeling, uh, and what are you most looking forward to in the next job? And uh, for Chief uh, Harrison, moving up in this in this position in the department, um, definitely must have some meaning. You'll be the second 
uh, African American in this role, and just, you know, talk about that as well. Right, those are two questions for our colleagues. We'll take them both. You start. Chief Monahan. Uh, Miles, it's a, it's a tough decision to leave the NYPD. This has been my life. 20 years old, I came on this job. You know, turning 60 in a couple of weeks. So this is where I've been my entire life. But, uh, you know, I'm going to miss seeing you late at night, 2 o'clock in the morning out on a scene. Maybe not. <laughs> but uh, I look forward to where I'm going. Listen, there's nothing I want more than to see New York like it was just two years ago. And the recovery's going to happen. And to be part of that, to be part of bringing this city, this great city that I love, back to where it should be, there is nothing better, nothing better than I can do. And I'm not really going that far away. So maybe across the street, I'm sure I'm going to be running into Commissioner Shea, Chief Harrison quite a lot, and I'm sure I'm going to have to run into you too, Miles, so I look forward to that. I'm changing my number. That's right. <laughs> Chief Harrison. Yeah. So, Miles, I just I don't want to correct you, but I believe I'm the third uh, African-American to be the chief of department, and uh, I'm flattered. Uh, but I also want to make sure this is somewhat clear. I'm also qualified for the position. I've, uh, thank you, sir. I've worked in every single borough. I know this city like the back of my hand. I've worked in five different bureaus. So I, I've been in the trenches. I've been out there with the men and women to what has to be done to make this city safe. So um, I'm grateful for the opportunity once again. I'm looking forward to um, working with all the great executives that we have in this department. I mean, we really have an all-star team, and we're going to get the job done, Bob. So thank you for that question. Thank you. Who's next? The next is Juliet from 1010 Wins. Well, good afternoon, gentlemen, and congratulations to both uh, outgoing Chief Monahan and incoming Chief Harrison. Uh, so my questions are for both of you as well. Uh, given the controversy and criticisms after the demonstrations in late spring, early summer, uh, what lessons have you learned and what's your takeaway from that and how are you pivoting in a different direction? Just going to start, and then we'll turn to both chiefs, and Juliet. You know, I want to emphasize that everyone learned from those experiences. That all of us want to do better. That all of us believe uh, that a very important, objective report done by Department of Investigation is what is guiding uh, changes that we need to make, and we're implementing as we speak. Uh, and we believe that 2021 is going to be a very different year and a year where the city comes together and a year where the city moves forward. So every single one of us takes from that experience. Uh, we've got to take this whole city to a better place in 2021. That means bringing police and community together. And we know it works. We saw it for years, six years in a row with neighborhood policing. Crime went down. The relationship between police and community got closer. We got to do that again and do it even more. You want to start? Sure. Listen, this was probably, again, a 39-year career. This was the toughest year that I've ever spent in law enforcement. Going through COVID, going through the demonstrations, everything that we faced during that time. But as a city and as a police department, we move forward. We get better. And we continue to keep this city safe. You know, we went through this in 2014. We reformed the city. We came up with neighborhood policing. We had the lowest crime rates and best connections we'd ever had before. The NYPD is better than anyone at, adjust at adjusting. And I have all the faith in the world that Rodney Harrison is going to make whatever adjustments need to be made. We are making them already with uh, Commissioner Shea at the helm running things. We are moving in the right direction. And I'm telling you, as you look back, when 2022 comes and you see this city in recovery and it's back to where we were in 2018, it'll be because of the work that uh, the men and women of the NYPD, our public and private partners, and all New Yorkers do. So I, I have nothing but uh, good things looking forward to in New York. Go ahead. Good afternoon. Um, you know, the, the most important thing for us is transparency and training. 
in order for us to get better to serve this community, those things are got to be at the forefront. How we allow peaceful protests. I may not be in this position right now if it wasn't for for protests. But it's important. There's a very, very thin line between protesting and violent demonstrations. And I think it's something that myself, I'll be working very closely with my executive staff um, to allow those peaceful protests to go in the right direction, but make sure we have a good strategy in place just in case if there are uh, unfortunate individuals that want to make it harder for uh, those individuals that want to do the peaceful protests. And so um, we have good things in place. Uh, we have Harry Whedon that's uh, overseeing our citywide operations division. Uh, Juanita Holmes, who's our chief of patrol. Jeff Madry, who's absolutely phenomenal, as well as a mentor to me as our chief of community affairs. As a team, we'll come up with great strategies to make sure that we protect people that want to protest peacefully. Go ahead, Juliet. Hey, thank, thank you. And uh, Chief, now Senior Advisor Monahan, <laughs> uh, what do you what do you see now? What's your first order of business? What are you who you're sitting down with, coordinating? Uh, what do you see happening? You know, when you start, have to sit down with uh, Lorraine Grillo. I, I haven't met her yet, but I hear nothing but fantastic things about her. That she is the right person to to put together the economic plan that we need. I believe we have our first war room meeting tomorrow, which I will be a part of. Uh, and we're going to hit this running right away. I know I'll be working closely with Chief Harrison and Commissioner Shea on the safety portion, but it's so much deeper than that. It's what do the businesses in this uh, city need to feel comfortable to return to business? How do I get buildings? that are 5 to 10 percent occupied office buildings, how do I get them comfortable to come back to New York? And they will. And this is what we're going to be working. We're going to be reaching out to everyone, every community in this city, to see what we can do to get them back. And I'm really looking forward to it. Amen. Go ahead. The next is Katie Honan from The Wall Street Journal. Hi, good morning. Or, sorry, it's the afternoon. It's 1 p.m. Um, my question is uh, for you, um, Senior Advisor Monahan. Uh, I guess following up with Juliet's question, looking at the priorities that you are working on, if you could speak a little bit about your experience in the NYPD and how it's sort of made, equipped you for this job beyond just the public safety aspect of recovery, but like you mentioned, business outreach, whether it's small business or large corporations, just some of your background within the NYPD and how it applies here. 39 years, I've worked through all sorts of communities at every level. Small businesses, bodega owners, Fernando Mateo all the time with the businesses up in the Bronx and some businesses in the Heights, uh, going to the Rudin family, uh, to the large businesses, what do they need to come back together, restaurant owners, associations. I've spoken to them all. I've sat down, listened to their complaints, the bids, the bids throughout this city. There are issues that they need to have handled, and it's not always an NYPD problem. There are a lot of different agencies in this, and we have to come up with solutions together. The NYPD may do some, Department of uh, Homeless Service another, Health and Hospitals the third. There's a lot of different agencies that we need to put together, focus along with our local communities. How do we solve an issue in an area and make everyone feel safe? and get these businesses. It's what I've been doing my entire career. It's what neighborhood policing was all about. Neighborhood police was making each and every neighborhood safe, where the people not only were safe, but felt safe. We have to get rid of the perception that this city is not safe, because we really are moving in the right direction, and things are coming back. And this is what I've done in my career, and I really look forward to moving, this, moving the ball down the field. Go ahead, Katie. <clears throat> Thank you. And I guess if you, you, Mr. Mayor, and and um, Mr. Monahan, even maybe the commissioner, just want to chime in about how this all kind of fell into place. Um, were you thinking about retiring and then approach the mayor? Mayor, did you say, hey, you know, leave the NYPD and come over to me? How did this kind of work? Was it a, uh, we, you know, just some curiosity of the background of how this worked? Because, you know, it is interesting to see, um, you know, someone like Lorraine Grillo has worked in government. She's been your sort of go-to person for a lot of this, particularly 
harder stuff and just the how this happened that um you brought mr monahan over sure. i guess across chambers or whatever it is. yeah i'll i'll start um and i won't speak for terry and you know the the family considerations and everything else i will simply say i knew terry was thinking about the future uh and what he would do uh after this administration after the nypd um i have been thinking about putting together a recovery team and the right folks to help us supercharge recovery. Uh, Lorraine, obviously, is someone I've just uh, had the most extraordinary experiences with in, during my administration, but even well before. And uh, I knew the role she would play made so much sense, but I knew there were other pieces to the puzzle. And the questions around safety, we needed a lot of energetic efforts to work with communities, especially the business community, to figure out how we could get everyone communicating, understanding what's being done to address real concerns, but also hearing concerns and figuring out solutions. And I knew uh, Terry would fit that. We have worked very, very closely since the initiation of neighborhood policing. I remember uh, vividly the first meetings on neighborhood policing, and we joke about it. <laughs> Terry showing me different maps and charts, and I uh, elegantly challenged him. And despite that, you Despite that, yes. Explanation. Some of his explanations at first were not as clear as they might have been, and we worked it through. But, um, you know, someone who was one of the architects of neighborhood policing, I can't think of someone better to help us develop the strategy for the comeback. And so it really was very organic to me uh, once I knew, uh, and it made sense, that he was uh, trying to make sense of what were his next steps, I said, this is an opportunity to get him involved where we need him most, which is on the recovery. You want to add? Yeah, again, 39 years of doing policing, I was looking to get to the private sector. I had actually spoken to a few companies uh, where people knew that I was looking for something. Uh, it was just recently, the mayor called me in gave me this opportunity. It's great for me. It's great for my family. And I believe it's going to be great for the city of New York. Go ahead. Last question for today goes to Craig McCarthy from The Post. Mr. Mayor, Commissioner, Chief Monahan, Chief Harrison, I want to first say congratulations. Um, so we reported this morning that uh, Chief Monahan was scheduled to appear for the CCRB next week. Um, <clears throat> Uh, during uh, for at least two contentious uh, police responses during the George, George Floyd protests. Um, will Monahan still appear for those meetings? And um, if you can answer that, then I'll have a follow up. I, I, can, I can handle that one, yes. <laughs> Go ahead, Craig. Um, but so how, with that then, if he's moving over to be an advisor, how would you respond to the message it sends to the rank and file in public when it comes to police discipline? If the highest ranking uniform officer can resign, get a new post, and uh, won't sit for disciplinary probe in the sense that he won't face any discipline since he's not at the police department anymore, if you know he did anything wrong. Um, yeah. I, uh, look, I think it is, uh, first and foremost, what's gonna bring our city back? Let's, let's start at the beginning. What's gonna bring our city back? Putting together the most talented group of people whether they're working directly on the recovery effort, as Terry will now, working with Lorraine and me and others, or whether it's folks who are gonna lead the NYPD forward, like Commissioner Shea and Chief Harrison, how do we come back? Because everyone we're talking about has given their life to New York City. So let's be clear about that. Um, I absolutely respect critiques and concerns, um, but I wanna start at the beginning. These are every single person up here has given their life to New York City and will continue to. Um, whatever uh, process is going on, of course, uh, as we said, uh, Chief Monaghan will participate, CCRB, openly, uh, and we will respect whatever they decide. I'm someone who believes the CCRB needs to be further empowered, which is why we came up with the discipline matrix, which is why we agreed NYPD and CCRB agreed to the MOU, uh, which is why we're expanding the CCRB power in so many other ways. But I think the message this sends is that we're moving the recovery forward and the city needs to move forward. I really think that's the essence of this. This is about our future and I don't know a New Yorker 
who doesn't want to see us recover and get back to where we were and then some. In fact, we have to recover and be even fairer and more just, and that's what we're all going to work on together. Okay, that's what we got for today. Everyone, just conclude by saying uh, a, a lot of leadership working together for the good of New York City and a really special day when uh, someone uh, who came up through the ranks now is going to be able to serve a city in a new way and someone else who came up through the ranks now raises to, uh, rises up to the highest uniform position in the NYPD. Uh, this is just an example of the extraordinary talent and commitment that people have in this city and that's why we will come back and we will come back strong. Thank you, everyone.